Grace and peace to you, and welcome to Eastminster Presbyterian Church as we worship Christ today. I want to share a few announcements of the body. As part of our worship service this morning, we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper. So if you would like to participate in that act of communion, you can pause this broadcast and gather your communion elements and then hit play again. A few other announcements. Uh, brownies are due on May 6th. As a reminder, um, they're requesting that we individually wrap those brownies. On May 6th, there will be a national day of prayer. Information was emailed out on Thursday about that event. Next Saturday, this coming Saturday, we will have our spring cleanup day from about 8 to noon. It will be a great opportunity to spend some time with other members of the congregation and to help uh, continue to beautify our uh, campus. Worship ministry is looking for a few volunteers. All the details are in the bulletin about that position. If you're interested in that position, you can contact Sue Bergeron or Kate Strickler. Let us worship God together. Please join me in the call to worship. What shall we return to the Lord for all the good things God has done for us? We will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. of God helps us in our weakness, interceding with sighs too deep for words. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin together. 
Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We overlook the poor and the hungry and pass by those who mourn. We are deaf to the cries of the oppressed and indifferent to calls for peace. We despise the weak and abuse the earth you made. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust your power to change our lives and make us new that we may know the joy of life abundant given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Hear the good news of God's promise. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Thanks be to God. morning, boys and girls. I want to uh, share with you this morning a word. This is a word we don't use very often, but it's a word we're going to hear a moment in our gospel reading. It's the word abide, abide. This is a word that means stay close to me, hang with me. It's a word that we're using. We want to spend time with someone. We want to be like that person. I have a couple people I want to introduce you to. This is one of my best friends, Pastor Tim. This is he and I uh, prepping for a worship service together. He is someone I choose to abide with, that I choose to hang with. I learn from my friend, Pastor Tim. He's an amazing pastor. He lives in King of Prussia, and I have the joy of spending time with him, abiding. This is, another f- this is another friend I want to introduce you to. This is my friend, Ed. He was my roommate in college, and that is his wife. I choose to spend time to abide with Ed. Ed and Tim are both people I want to be like. My friend Ed, he lives in Texas. We, we talk on the phone once a month. We have a monthly phone conversation. And in Texas, he works uh, with the formerly homeless and helps them find homes and gets them into proper living situations. And Pastor Tim helps folks in King or Prussia people I abide with, people I want to spend time with and be more like. It's an important word, that word abide. And Jesus told us to abide with him, to hang with him, to spend time with him. So I want you to think about who are the people that you want to abide with. Maybe it's your parents or grandparents or maybe an aunt or uncle, a friend, those people in your life that you want to be like and want to spend time with. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, may we abide in you, knowing you and loving you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for listening. The Old Testament lesson is taken from the book of Psalm, chapter 22, verses 25 through 31. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. 
The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down, and before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. For 
the night Pour on my child Joy comes in the morning The darkest hour means dawn is just inside The darkest hour means dawn is just inside Thank you, Don. Reading from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the real vine, and my father is the farmer. He cuts off every branch of me that does not bear grapes. And every branch that is grape-bearing, he prunes back, so it will bear even more. You are already pruned back by the message I have spoken. Live in me. Make your home in me, just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine. You can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. I am the vine. You are the branches. When you're joined with me, I am with you. The relation intimate and organic. The harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can produce, you can't produce a thing. Anyone who separates from me is dead wood gathered up and thrown in the bonfire. But if you make yourself at home with me and my words at, your, at home in you, you can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. This is how my father shows who he is when you produce grapes when you mature as my disciples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, illumine the words by your spirit that we may hear your word and the word you speak to us. For the sake of Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Amen. Jesus is continuing his teaching moment. At this moment, when this is taking place, the disciples are participating in the Last Supper. John is unique in placing such a large teaching block in this setting. It is also the final I am statement in the Gospel of John. So far, Jesus has said to the disciples, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And finally, I am the true vine. The last image is more than just an agricultural image. It is an image that is deeply connected to the people and the nation of Israel. In Isaiah, we read the words, you brought a vine out of Egypt, you drove the nations, and you planted it. God planted that vine, that nation of Israel. God cares for this vineyard, and at times, God has executed judgment and pruned that vineyard. By pruning it, it ensures fruitfulness, connectivity, and unity. In Jesus' teaching, when we read it, Jesus is the true vine, and the disciples are the branches. They must abide. They must remain in Jesus. A vine and a branch are indistinguishable from one another, yet the branches can be pruned and cut off, and it will enable more growth. 
branches are obedient. They are always rooted and are growing in Jesus. Gal O'Day, in her commentary on the Gospel of John, asked the following question of the text. She asked, what does it mean for the church to live as the branches of Christ? What does it mean for the church to live as the branches of Christ? What would the church look like if it embraced this model for corporate life? How would that change the church? How would it flavor the church? I believe part of the response to these questions rests in a hymn that was composed <clears throat> in 1847. The Scottish Anglican Henry Francis Light composed the hymn, Abide With Me. At the time, Light was suffering from tuberculosis, and he was spending time in the countryside, hoping that he would be healed from this disease. And he penned these words, Abide with me. Fast falls the eventide, the darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, O oh Lord, abide with me. Abide with me. Abide with me becomes a prayer. God, when it grows dark, Lord, remain. Abide with me. When I no longer have comfort, when I no longer feel safe, God, abide with me. I'm sure all of us can identify a moment, a moment in our life when we felt profoundly alone. Sit with that moment. Sit with those feelings for a moment. How does that feel? Maybe for you, it was during a period of transition or a period of loss. Sit with that and ask God to abide in that moment. As the body of Christ, part of our role and call is to abide with those who feel abandoned, alone, and oppressed. Swift to its close ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou, O thou who changest not, Abide with me. Where the vine is not producing fruit, the vine grower prunes the, the vine so that new growth may take place. Our focus should not be on what is lost, but on what God is doing, how God is pruning us in order for new growth to appear. How is God calling Eastminster to new growth? What are the ways in which God is pruning us and calling us to respond to the changing world around us? We can all see the decay. Just this week, there were four shootings in York City alone. We can see this decay in the poverty that plagues so many of our communities. We see it in the divisions in our society, in the climate crisis. We see it in the fact that for many, political affiliations have become some sort of litmus test. How is God calling us? Calling us to speak into this decay. How is God calling us to respond? I need thy presence. Every passing hour. What but thy grace can foil the tempter's power? Who like thyself my guide and stay can be? Though cloud and sunshine, Lord, abide with me. 
This is a reminder that the world is not yet what God desires. Temptations abound. Even though Christ has conquered death, we continue to see death all around us. Poverty, racism, sexism, classism. And we may even wonder to ourselves, what has changed? How did Christ's work remake life in the midst of death? Just yesterday, I read an update from Presbyterian Disaster Assistance. PDA just sent an additional $20,000 to India, specifically to a program called PDA Birds Program. It is a rural development program that focuses on two states in the country of India. They work very directly with the Dalit population or the lowest caste in India. Paul Rao, the director of Bird's PDA, said the following, The poor are always becoming poorer. Their suffering starts from birth to death. They face hunger, discrimination, poverty, denial of rights, and no dignity. He goes on to say the dead are not even respected. But the BIRDS PDA program helps, providing food and medicine, decent treatment, socioeconomic and legal support, PPE, and an educational campaign for people who are on the edge. In the face of all the world's problems, there is always a temptation to turn inward and only focus on acts of self-preservation. But to follow Christ is to cling to the true vine, the true vine in the midst of temptation. I fear no foe. With thee at hand to bless, ills have no weight and tears no bitterness. Where is death's sting? Where grace thy victory? I triumph still if thou abidest with me. This is the gift that we are offered. The gift when we abide in Christ. It is not because we abide in Christ, but because Christ abides in us. In Christ, through Christ, and with Christ, we can do all things through Christ. Not because of ourselves, but because of Christ in us. We triumph only when we abide in Christ. This is the hope. So that Christ's church is a courageous sign to the world that the love of God is real. Too often the church has been a place of judgment. But Christ's love, Christ's love is inclusive. Christ's love is ever expanding. St. Paul's Presbyterian Church in Texas has made this love a cornerstone of their ministry. A church of about 500 they have historically helped to resettle refugees. At one point in the 80s, helping many Laotian refugees settle in the area. Many of these refugees went on to join the church and stay. They forever changed this congregation. As a congregation, they began focused on being multicultural, multi-generational, demonstrating real inclusivity, integrating members with disabilities and members of different classes. This should be the expectation that all people are included and that all people are welcomed. Christ's love has no boundaries. Hold Hold thou thy cross before my eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee. In life, in death, O Lord, abide with me. 
as we fix our eyes on the cross of Jesus. We become more like Christ. Our desires align with Christ. Desire the vine that will produce the fruit of Christ as we desire Christ's desires. May this be our prayer that we would abide in Christ. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we gather because we know you are still speaking. You are still speaking through your word. You are still speaking through your people. We pray that we may abide in you so that we may hear your voice and what you're calling us to. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Let us affirm our faith together by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth in the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With gratitude for God's faithfulness and thankfulness, we offer to God those things that we have received. Thank you for your continued generosity. who thirsts come to the water. Let those who have nothing come and eat. God will satisfy our souls with a rich feast, and we will bless the Lord as long as we live. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, O God, in this dry and weary land. You set a table for us in the wilderness and provide for all our needs. Even when we complain against you, you feed us with the bread of heaven. 
When we quarrel and question your grace, you give us water from a stone. How can we keep silent, O God? Even dry bones in the valley of death stand to sing your praise. We give you thanks and praise for Jesus, our way through the wilderness, our companion in the desert. He knows our hunger and thirst. He gives us the bread of life and living water to drink. He leads us beside still waters and prepares a table for us, even in the presence of our enemies. The cup of blessing overflows. And it is in that spirit of blessing that we lift before you the concerns of our heart, God, both the concerns that are spoken and unspoken. In this day, we come before you asking your blessing and healing upon Anna and Stacy and Michael and Judy and Alan and Ellen and Jan and the family and friends of Dallas Cheney's niece. God, be with these people, that they may know your love, the way your love abounds. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon this bread and this cup. By the power of your Spirit, breathe the life into our dust and into our bones. Make us one flesh and one blood, one in the body of Christ. And show us your love to all until wilderness and wanderings are over and we feast with you forever in the land that you promised. And it is in that spirit that we pray the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When Jesus was at table with his disciples, he took bread and he broke it and blessed it and gave it to them saying, This is my body broken for you. Whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, He took the cup and he poured it out saying this cup is cup of new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you do this you are proclaiming whenever you do this you are proclaiming life of Christ. Now whenever we eat and drink at this table We celebrate Christ's death and resurrection until he comes again. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us take together the bread of new life. Take and eat. The cup of salvation. Take and drink. Let us pray. Loving God, you have given us to share in the one bread and one cup. Make us one with Christ. Help us to bring your salvation to all the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
let us go trusting that God is with us in this and in every place. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you and abide with you this day forevermore. Amen. Amen.